So this is a little follow-up video after we learned the Pythagorean Theorem. We understand that the Pythagorean Theorem states that if I know a triangle is a right triangle, then I know that the corresponding sides, the side that's the hypotenuse squared, is equal to the leg squared plus the leg squared. So when I look at the converse of a Pythagorean Theorem, the converse is just going to state that I can take the, the hypothesis conclusion of that conditional statement and I can flip their order. So now, if I'm given a triangle, for example, triangle ABC, and I know it's a, and, um, and, I'm, and I'm given the Pythagorean theorem converse, if I know that the A squared plus B squared equals C squared, meaning the legs, the sum of the two legs squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, then I can state that the triangle is a right triangle. So, knowing that the converse is true, if we're given side lengths, we can determine whether or not those side lengths form a right triangle. So, where we're given something like this, where we have 15, 36, and 39, obviously 39 is the largest side, so that could be the hypotenuse, depending if it fits the height, the um, Pythagorean theorem. So, we'll take the largest side, 39 squared, is equal to 36 squared plus 15 squared. If both sides of this equation are true, then I know I have a right triangle. When I square 39, I get 1,521. That's equal to 36 squared plus 15 squared, and my calculator gives me 1521. And since those are equivalent, then yes, this is a right triangle. It's a little tougher when it comes to uh, squares, okay, when it comes to square rooting something. The square root of 11 is a number that is obviously greater than uh, 3 but less than 4 because it's between the perfect squares 9 and 16. So I know it's between 3 and 4, so it's less than 4. 2 times the square root of 7. Uh, square root of 7 obviously is something between 9 and uh, 4, so I know it's between 2 and 3 when I take the square root of it. So again, it's 2 times something between 2 and 3 is going to be greater than 4, so it's 2 times the square root of 7 is my possible hypotenuse. Another way to check that is kind of just go ahead and square all the values. If I'm looking for which one's the largest, when I square them, when I square them, I'll be able to see which square is the largest. And whatever square is the largest, that side's the largest. This is 11, this is 16, and when I square that, I get 28. Because remember, I could do 2 times, 2 squared is 4, and square root of 7 squared is 7. 4 times 7 is 28. So 28 is the largest, that's my hypotenuse, so 28 is my squared value of my hypotenuse is equal to leg squared plus leg squared. When I add those up, I get, ooh, I get 27. Now is 27 equal to 28? No, that is not true. So since that is not true, then because it fails the Pythagorean theorem, it is not a right triangle. Go ahead right now and try examples one and two and see how you do. Once you're done attempting those, uh, unpause the video and try to follow my steps. So looking at your own work here, we're going to square and we realize that 8 squared is my largest squared value, so 8 is my hypotenuse. When I square that, I get 64. It's equal to 16 plus 48. When I add those up, 64 equals 64, which is true. So yes, these three sides form a triangle. In example 2, 14 is the largest side, so that's my possible hypotenuse. When I square 14, I get 196. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared is 121. When I add up those two values, I get 221, which is greater than 196, not equal to. So it makes it not true, and therefore 10, 11, 14 does not make a triangle. So just because they're not equal doesn't mean that they're not triangles. Here we can use this method of using Pythagorean theorem along with the inequalities to determine by its angles if the side lengths form a triangle. So we can classify triangles by their angles using their side lengths. So when we know that we have a right triangle or a right angle, if it's a right angle, then we know the angle is equal to 90 degrees. So if c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, then the measure of angle c is equal to 90 degrees 
and triangle ABC is a right triangle. So there's some key things to note here. We have a right angle. We don't know that, but since these are equal, these values are equal, then we know the measure of angle C is 9 equal to 9 degrees, and that's what makes it a right triangle. Here, for example, when we have something where if C squared is less than A squared plus B squared, then the measure of angle C is going to be less than 90 degrees and triangle ABC is an acute triangle. So here's a way to remember this. If I have a less than value, if the hypotenuse squared is less than the sum of the two legs squared, then the angle at C is less than 90 degrees, which makes it an acute triangle. Remember, in an acute triangle, all the angles are less than 90 degrees. So hopefully that less than theme sticks together. Last but not least, we have obviously the obtuse triangle, which says if C squared is larger or greater than A squared plus B squared, then the measure of angle C is going to be greater than 90 degrees, and that makes triangle ABC is, a, is an obtuse triangle. So, just as a quick recap, equal to right triangle, less than, acute triangle, greater than, angle is greater than 90 degrees, and therefore makes it an obtuse triangle. So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples of this before we try it on our own. Determine whether the, number, the numbers given represent sides of a triangle. That's your first check mark. Are they sides of a triangle using the triangle inequality theorem? And if they can, then classify the triangle as acute, right, or obtuse. So the first thing you need to check for is that the smaller two sides, their sum, has to be greater than the third side. So when I add 8 and 9, I get, end up with 17, yes, which is greater than the third side. So as long as it follows that inequality, then I know I have a triangle. Now I need to classify the triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. So the largest side is 10, we're going to square it, and we're going to take the sum of the two legs squared. Depending on the values of these two expressions, if they're equal, less than, greater than, that'll give me an idea if it's acute, obtuse, or right. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. 64 plus 81 is 145. So since the hypotenuse squared, or the largest side squared, is less than, is less than the sum of the two legs squared, less than, that tells me this is an acute triangle. In example B, we have 9, 7, and 5. Which one's the largest? Well, 9's the largest. So as long as 7 plus 5 is greater than 9, we're okay. Which it is. It's equal to 12. So 12 is greater than 9, so yes, this is a triangle. And now it's all about checking for the classification. 9 squared, and we're going to check for 7 squared plus 5 squared. 9 squared is 81, 7 squared is 49, and 5 squared is 25. Again, knowing these perfect squares is really important for our, our lesson today. 49 plus 25 is 74, and we want to know, is, 70, is 81, the, high, the largest side, is it greater than, less than, or equal to the sum of the other two legs squared? So when I look at that value, I can see that it's greater than 74, which means this is going to be an obtuse triangle. Go ahead and flip to the next page. And go ahead and try those two on your own. Again, once you pause the video, try them on your own, and then check back with me with the correct answer. So here we have our workout for one and two. Be careful with number one. If you check the first step, the triangle inequality theorem, since the sum of the two smaller sides is not greater than the third side, 22 is not greater than 30, that is not true. These, two side, these three sides do not form a triangle. So I can just stop right there. I can't classify something that doesn't exist. Example two, when I look at 16 plus 30, the two smaller sides, they add to 46, which is greater than 36. And then when I square the, pot, the largest side and I add up the squares of the two smaller sides, 
I realize that the, the largest side is greater than some of the two smaller sides squared, so that makes it an obtuse triangle. We're going to put it all together here with an example um, using a uh, coordinate plane. So go ahead and pause the video, give it a shot on your own, see what you get through, and then follow my steps um, after you play the video again. So we're going to use two different methods here. Um, one is today's lesson with the Pythagorean theorem and side lengths of a triangle. The other is dealing with uh, slopes of lines. So try number one is the first way. Let's go ahead and look at the segment lengths. We have three, we have three segment lengths of a triangle. We have AB, we have BC, and we have AC. If I can find the lengths of each of those segments, I'll be able to determine, based off their segment lengths, if they're going to form a right triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem. So the length of AB is going to travel up to and right 1, 2, 3, 4. Kind of using the distance formula and forming triangles here, I know that it's going up to and right 4, so the length of AB is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared. So 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, 4 plus 16 16 plus 4, take the square root of that, is the square root of 20. The length of AB is the square root of 20. Looking at BC, I go 2 to the right and down 4. So since that's a similar type of triangle, I'm going to follow that same pattern of 2 squared plus 4 squared. 4 plus 16 is 20, so that's going to give me the square root of 20. Those two segments are the exact same length. Last piece is AC, which goes down to and right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I kind of use the Pythagorean theorem because that is a right triangle. I want to try to find the hypotenuse, which would be square root of 2 squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 squared. 4 plus 36. It's going to give me a square root of 40, and that's the third side length. So if I found the three side lengths of the triangle, the next thing I want to be able to do is use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if the largest side, the possible hypotenuse, if I square that, is it going to be equal to the sum of the two legs squared? When I square a square root, I end up with just a number. So does 40 equal 20 plus 20? I think so. So since this is a true statement, now I know that, yes, triangle ABC is a right triangle. Now we could also kind of determine if it's a um, right triangle using its slopes. So if I look at the slope, the slope of AB, the slope of AB tells me the rise over run. So if I look at the slope here, I'm going up 2 and right 4. Up 2, positive 2, right 4, positive 4. It's got a slope of 1 half. The slope of BC is going down 4, right 2. So down 4 means negative 4, and right 2 means positive 2. So that's got a slope of negative 2. The slope of the last segment, AC, has a slope that is down 2 and write 6 plus 6. So that's got a slope of negative 1 third when I simplify. When I look at those slopes, there's, a, there's definitely a, uh, something going on between those two. The relationship that 1 half has with negative 2 is that they are opposite reciprocals. And if two slopes are opposite reciprocals, that means those lines that they pass through have to be perpendicular. And if lines are perpendicular, that means they form right angles. So if I know that's a right angle inside the triangle ABC, then I also know that triangle ABC is a right triangle. Different way to do the problem, but you can still get it done that way. That's the conclusion of 7.2 notes. Go ahead and rewatch those if you need more help. Try the homework, and we'll talk about it next class.